This wasn't the best idea. <laughs> My name is Cory Coyote. My real name's James, obviously, but you didn't know that. I mean, who uses their real name for their fasona? I was born on September the 10th, 1995, in a small town called Bishop Auckland. We're not gonna talk about that because it's a shithole. Only one great person has ever came out of that town, and his name was Stan Laurel, about a hundred years ago. I grew up in a small town in the northeast of England called West Cornforth, which is about seven miles south of Durham. These days I normally tell people that I'm from Newcastle and a majority because nobody knows where the fuck Durham is. Now, I'm not normally one to sugarcoat things, but stuff like this was a daily occurrence in this village. You have to have a bit of grit about you to live here. Everybody knows everybody and you can be kicked out for ordering a vegetarian breakfast. But around to protect me all the time was my family, which consisted of my dad, my mother, my sister, and my brother. Yeah, I was the youngest of the lot. And all of our uncles and cousins on one side of the family, we all stuck very, very close to each other. We always looked out for each other, and we still do to this day. I won't be naming names because my family I know will not like it. With the exception of my brother though, my brother's cool. We're also a very religious family. I grew up a Jehovah's Witness for 18 years of my life. Would you know? And before you start asking, yes, those are the people that go around every Saturday morning knocking on people's doors. Hello, we were wondering if we could talk to you about Jesus. We also had two purebred pit bulls called Silk and Teak. Unfortunately, I don't remember much of them because they died while I was quite young, but my dad loved them. By the time I was four years old, I'd learned how to ride a bike. My brother to this day still tells me that I was the fastest person to ever learn how to ride a bike. I just got on it and rode it. Me and my brother also liked to play games on the family computer, which consisted of Jet Set, Willy, Manic Miner, and... Robocop? Oh, and yeah, we had Doom as well. But then Dad found out we had Doom, and that didn't last very long. Me and my brother used to hang out quite a lot. When I say a lot, I mean a lot. We had our own mixtapes, our favourite band was Audio Slave. Although when my brother wanted to go to bars and pubs, he obviously couldn't take me, and I really wanted to go. So he had this thing where he would say, I'm going to the car wash. Why did he say that, you might ask? Because when I was a little kid, we went into a car wash, and I was traumatized. I mean, terrified. But now I know he just said that so he could go to the bar. But still, I never looked at my brother any different. Because when I was growing up, my brother was my hero. And in many ways, shapes and form, he still is to this day. When I was six, my sister got married and moved out. At that point, that was the start of her new life. She was swept away and went on to creating a family of her own. She now has three kids, and I am so proud of my sister. Because she's awesome. But it was great news for me as a six-year-old, because then I got my own room. Going from bunk beds with my my brother to having my own space. When you're six years old, you don't really appreciate it as much though. Although I will say my sister did have a horrible blue vinyl floor and these mirror wardrobes that made the most ear-piercing screech. While growing up with my family, I learned that we like to travel to these places in the north called Whitby and the North Yorkshire Moors. I spent a good deal of my childhood here within vacations or just days out. By the way, if you like fish and chips, you need to go to Whitby because they do the best fish and chips in the world there. I'm not kidding. They also have a Dracula experience. I went in there when I was eight years old and I've never been in there again. When I was eight years old, my family took me abroad for the first time. We flew over to Italy and stayed in a place called Monte Pulciano, which is a really nice place. I remember experiencing foreign heat for the first time and having my feet burn burnt by the floor. Side note, if you've never been to Italy, go see it. It's a good place. We even went to Siena there. Sadly, they didn't have the annual horse racing there. From then on, my family did take me around the world. Yeah, the first 10 years of my life were pretty cool. It seemed like we had the perfect family, although it seemed that way. March 20th, 2006. On the evening, my dad sat us all down in the front room and told us that mum and dad were getting a divorce. This was the point that my life changed forever. And when you're 10 years old and you receive that news, it destroys you. Turned out that Jan, my so-called mother, was being extremely unfaithful. And over the course of around 10 years, she'd emotionally abused my dad. But as a 10 year old, I was not aware of any of this. It was only within the next five years after this that I discovered what a horrible bitch my mom was. And a week after I was told this, she was gone. And she took everything. Oh, and I mean she took everything. She took the van, she took my dad's bed. But all hope was not lost, because all of our family came together to help us out. My sister and her husband, they gave us a bed. Aunt Babs and her husband gave us a car. For my dad and my brother, it was a real struggle. And now this is why I view my brother as a hero because he had plans to move away, start a big career, and have a new life somewhere. And he gave all of that up to look after me. But anyway, Jan was gone and it was just us three left. And I had no idea what was going on or why it had even happened at this point. So for the next three years after that, me and my brother would go down and visit my mother every weekend. And over the course of that period, I really came to learn what kind of a horrible 
cunt my mother was. Turns out that she not only emotionally abused my dad, but she also emotionally abused my sister, making constant comments and remarks about her weight. Luckily though, my sister's a fighter, and she never let her get to her. And within those three years of my visits to my mother's house, things kept on popping up here and there. Really dark stuff that no 12-year-old should ever fucking see. So imagine you are a 12-year-old kid, and you stumble across a video of your mother fucking other men. So I guess I blame my mother for me being gay. Fast forward to when I was 13. I was 13 and I'd cut ties with my mother and I was emotionally fucked. I was an avid mountain bike rider and I had no friends. Oh yeah, I went to Spennymoor school. That was a fucking cackle. The bullying was non-stop. But all of that was about to change. So when I was 13, I discovered a movie called Kung Fu Panda. I loved this movie and I still do to this day. When I would come home from school, I just went and hid in my room and put this DVD on. And it gave me great solace from just the everyday bullshit. But even this wasn't enough. One day when I was in school, I was walking past the music area of the school and there was this battered old guitar. And it just plucked the strings a few times, you know? And in that moment, it clicked. This is what I want to do. So when I got home that night, I asked my dad, what would you think if I started playing guitar? To which he said, yeah, that sounds great. So my brother gave a friend called Rachel a call, who was a lead singer and a guitarist in a band, who asked very nicely if she could teach me how to play guitar. And so it began. One lesson, two lessons, three lessons. Dad, this is getting interesting. My dad saw what I was capable of doing after just three lessons worth of playing. And so he took me into Durham City Centre to a battered old music shop called EBGB's and bought me my first guitar. Which, by the way, I still have to this day. One month. Two months. Three months. Okay, you're learning this way too quickly. I always used to practice and play songs in front of my brother that he'd asked for. He would never say a good job or anything like that. He would always say, keep practicing, more practice. You need more practice. And so I did, I kept practicing. And by the way, this wasn't my brother being mean. He just wanted me to do well. Did I also mention around the same time I started taking up photography and pictures and videos? Yeah, that came around the same time. <laughs> February 2008. I was still reeling from the horrible images that I'd seen from my mother, so my dad said, why don't we just go on holiday? My dad bought me a crappy little camcorder from Lidl, and then told me, we're going to Florida. My 12-year-old brain nearly exploded with excitement. This was the best vacation I've ever had in my entire life, because it was three seniors and four younger lads. This is without a doubt one of the best times I've ever had in my entire life. We even went to see a nighttime shuttle launch. <laughs> Zero and liftoff of Endeavour, going where east and west. Houston now controlling. Houston Endeavour World Program. And best of all, Walmart. Okay, okay, okay. I know that most Americans don't like Walmart and they hate it and they think it makes their country look bad. Don't worry, we love Walmart and we will happily take it off your hands if you don't want it. I will never ever forget that vacation. Fast forward to when I was 17. I'm unsure what the year was exactly. But long before this point, I had cut ties with every single member of my mother's side of the family and I wanted nothing to do with them. I became a rather bitter individual, or in other words, a very angry teenager. I know, typical. And because of obvious reasons, I did not socialize well at all. But when I was 17, my grandmother had died from my mother's side of the family, which I was never really close to in the first place, but it's still sad nonetheless. Now, initially, I went to the funeral just to support my sister, because I knew my mother would be there. And also, by this point, my sister looked amazing, and she had really done well for herself. And this is where the best juicy bit of tea comes in. Because very rarely in our lifetime do we ever go to a funeral and actually find something funny. Me and my siblings were all stood in a line waiting for the hearses to come down the drive. And all the family members get out of the hearse, and there's my mother. She had turned into this ugly, old, fat, overweight mess. And I just looked at my sister, trying to hold back the biggest laugh. Because in my head, I was just screaming, HA! Ah! Fuck you! All those years of torture you gave her, and she turned out beautiful, and you turned into this horrible old fucking hag. HA! Ah! Now, obviously, I didn't say any of these things. This was all in my head, but I was beaming with just evil happiness for the entire day. And this was a fucking funeral, I should add. But overall, it was a great funeral for me because I got some closure, because I know that my mother turned out to be fucking horrible. And I think it's a good life lesson for everyone watching this video, that what goes around comes around. Throughout my teen years, I'd become a rather awkward and a bit of a bitter person. But that's what you get when you're a teenager. I was also, believe it or not, a 
bitter, horrific homophobe. But I think this was just to hide the fact that I was gay myself. And although I mentioned that my brother is the best brother that anyone could ask for, I, on the other hand, was not. Sad to say that I was actually quite bitter and horrible towards my brother and my dad, and there wasn't really an excuse for it. But my dad still cared for me, and my brother did too, and we still went around the world together. But over time, I grew distant from my family. I spent a lot of time just hidden away in my room, making music and playing games. The bullying had died down though, since I'd learned how to fight. After I'd showed the so-called tough guys in school that they were not so tough, after all, I got left alone, and they didn't try and bully me after that. Things were actually looking up for me, but I just wasn't happy. I was still miserable at school, I was... So overall, I wasn't a happy person. And because of this, when I was 18, I felt more alone than ever. I was kicked out of sixth form in college because I just didn't care for the stuff I was doing. But round about this time, I met a guy called Sam. And for the first time in my life, I'd actually made a good friend. And we actually shared common interests with each other, even though I was a bit weird. And those couple of years that of knowing Sam were actually really, really good fun for me. John! Also around this time, I joined a little band and we were just like, did cover songs, but it was really good fun because we all had a common interest and we just played songs that we liked. Then Sam came into the mix and we started up another one. Admittedly, we sucked for one good reason. Everyone wanted to be the star of the show. Narcissism, if you will. But me and Sam were cool and we did some crazy stuff together. <laughs> But like me, Sam also had his mother problems. His mother was batshit insane. Like f***ing cuckoo caca. Not to mention that she was also Munchausen by proxy. So not only did we have common interests, but we also had mummy issues. But for the longest time, me and Sam were just attached at the hip. But also, around the same time, my photography had taken off. It was nothing but progress, progress, progress. So one day, my brother came to me and introduced me to an app called Instagram. It was perfect, it was everything that I'd ever wanted. It's a place that I could share all of my work. And so I started uploading my stuff to it. And this was how I was introduced to the furry fandom. I'd mentioned previously that I had a love for Kung Fu Panda and anthropomorphic animals in films. And I loved shows like Father of the Pride and Mongrels. And I wish someday those shows would come back. But as soon as I found the furry fandom, I instantly loved it. I wanted to know more and it was just everything that I could ever want. And so I became friends with a guy called Vol. Mech, the first furry I ever knew. And so we became friends, we chatted here and there, and I was finally starting to feel happy again. And from then on I was introduced to people like James Coyote and Orko. These three furries is why I'm here today. I watched the videos they uploaded, and I just loved it more and more. And if you go to my old Instagram account today, you can see the point of where things started to change for me. And from then I created my first OC, and started making more friends. And on August 31st of 2013, I went to my first Fermi in York. I remember being on the train going down to York, being really giddy with excitement. It was a really hot day, I turned up two hours early, and the day couldn't have been more perfect. And it's a moment I will never ever forget, but with me going into the furry fandom, it had its own set of problems. My brother and my dad did not like it one bit. When they started looking into what I was doing for fun, they read up on some very misleading information, in which it made them really worried about my safety. So they wanted me to stay as far away from the furry fandom as possible. But with all this good experience that I'd had, and finally being really happy with something that I'd found, I just couldn't let go. And so began a year-long battle between myself and my family. By the way, for those who are watching and think this is really bad, do not worry. This was all my family was doing is they were looking out for me and they just wanted me to be safe. And that's perfectly understandable. That's what good parenting is. But because of this conflict, I wasn't able to mature as a person. And a lot of the time I had to constantly have my social life in hiding. And because of all this conflict, it caused me to do some really stupid stuff that pushed a lot of my friends away. And I ended up causing a lot of hurt for a multiple array of people, which then caused me to start all over again with the furry fandom, getting rid of my old character because at that point it became really notorious because of how stupid I was. But in 2014 I started talking to a friend called Pablo, who then introduced me to my now current boyfriend Skyware. Me and Skyware started talking and getting to know each other over the course of three months, and at that point we both fell in love with each other, and we started dating each other online, and once again I'd started to feel some solace and some happiness, while also rebuilding my relationship with the furry community, after all the burnt bridges. And within this I created my first furry music video, which was the first time I met Majira. Yep, I collaborated with Majira before all y'all did. Gold badge to my name. 
<laughs> I hope he doesn't mind me saying that. But I knew if I told my family this, that it would not wash over and it would not go well. I knew if I stayed at home and continued my lifestyle and it was found out that it would not go well for me. So myself and Skyware decided to move in together, despite us never meeting each other. I had no money to my name, no job, nothing. And then, on August 16th, 2014, myself, Skyware, and our friend Pablo and his partner moved to Manchester together. And within that moment, I felt free. I was my own person from then on. In those first couple of months, I, I just took it all in. And I was able to become friends with some amazing people. I got to meet Foxby and Arona and Sora, and I'm still friends with them today because they really helped me as a person. That's not to say that I didn't have my own set of problems while living in Manchester. And while one of our housemates was one of the nicest people, his partner on the other hand was one of the worst people you could ever meet. And it just left us feeling alienated, and then money problems came in after that. I had nothing and I had to turn to pornography for money, and I can tell you right now it is the worst career choice I've ever taken. It felt like I was a piece of meat on a slab. Lab, and I felt really degraded, but it was something I had to do in order to survive. And it's safe to say that I will never ever work in porn again. And it truly was one of the most awful experiences. I also had to deal with my autism around this time because I was my own person and I had to learn how to socialise with people because I did not know how to socialise. But despite these truly awful situations that I was in, I felt happy because I had a new life and it was a new beginning for me and I focused mainly on making music which never went anywhere sadly and then one day Skyware gets chatting to a friend online and goes to see him a few times and then I joined in as well and then we'd made our new best friend and you guys know him today as Rico Tiger Rico would often invite us down to just hang out and made us feel really welcome. He could see that we were struggling financially and in March of 2015, he moved us down to Plymouth. After only seven months of being in Manchester, I was on the move again, but this time it was permanent. And sure, it was a learning curve at first as we had silly little arguments and just new living habits, but we felt at ease. And in that same month, Skyware saw that my favourite fursuit maker was open for commission. And in May of that same year, Skyware surprised me with my first fursuit, which is how most of you see me today. And then in the same month, I went to my first furry convention, Confuzzle 2015. And it's the most fun I've ever had at a convention, meeting up with close friends and meeting new other friends. Later in that same year, on December 2015, Rico saw that I had great potential at video editing and suggested that I should make a gaming channel as he'd seen what I was able to do with music videos and on February 24th 2016 I released the first video on this channel and we just kept going from there having a lot of fun with stuff so we decided to make another one and another one and another one and it just kept growing we ended up getting to play with people like Shire and 2 Griffin and Telephone and it just kept growing and more people joined and the more it grew and sure over the course of that time some people got greedy and some people got toxic and they eventually went away but even with those little hiccups with bad people we still stayed strong on August 14th 2017 my channel gets hit with the yellow demonetized symbol now you probably might not believe this but my channel was one of the first channels in the world to be hit with this new wave of demonetization but it wasn't all bad though because it managed to spark something better because within this time of hardship it allowed me to start up my patreon and the whole community responded and came out to help and i can't thank everyone who's helped and supported me enough because without them i would not be here today but it's been an incredible experience for both myself and them because we've been through thick and thin and the support that i've been shown is massive and it's heartwarming in mid-2016, I started watching a guy called Minilad, who is still my favourite YouTuber, and he's an awesome dude. And then I actually got to meet Minilad at Insomnia 62, which was another really great moment for me. And to this day, we still chat here and there, and it's probably one of the few times ever where you meet your idols and you're not disappointed. And then over the course of the next year, I got introduced to Adler, Keatlock, and Doryu. And at the time I met these guys, I was going through a pretty low point of just feeling really down. And these guys just came in and picked up my mood because they are such awesome people. And then we get on to today at 50,000 subscribers and the story isn't over. And I'm gonna try and keep as good as I can be and keep going. Because in this life, nobody knows what to do or even the best way to go about it. We all just run around and do the best we can. And it's important that we all help each other and look out for one another. And it's important that we are there for one another. I hope you guys are not bored with my journey so far. 
because I want you guys to come with me and live the rest of it, because we're not even close to Journey's End. We've got a long way to go, but I hope you guys can come with me and have a hell of a good experience, and we can all do something special together. Um, Rico's cooking. <laughs> 